Today is a Sala Buja. We commemorate several events that were all connected. The Buddha gave his first sermon, setting the wheel of Dharma in motion. He gave it to the five brethren. They were the people who had been looking after him when he was going through his austerities and then gave up on him when he stopped his austerities. After he gained awakening, he, he sat under the Bodhi tree for seven weeks, or in the vicinity of the Bodhi tree for seven weeks. And then he thought about teaching. And after thinking about it, the teachers who had taught him the formless jhanas, he realized that they had already gone up to the formless realms where they couldn't be taught, because in the formless realms you're out of, out of touch with others. And then he thought of the five brethren. He knew where they were, so he went and found them. And there's a long story, which I'll be telling tonight, but he ended up teaching them the Dharma, which meant that he was a teaching Buddha now instead of just a private Buddha. One of them gained the Dharma eye, which is proof that the Buddha was now a teaching Buddha. And that was the first member of the Noble Sangha and the first member of the Conventional Sangha, which means that the Triple Gem then became complete. We already had the Buddha, we already had the Dhamma. Now we had the Sangha as well. So it's an important event. These events help us remind that the years in which we live are not all that different from the years in which the Buddha lived. He walked on this earth, he taught. And we can think about what he taught and how he taught and what it means for us. The fact that someone has found the way to put an end to suffering and has taught it to others in a way that's still available to us. And if we don't take advantage of it, it's a real shame. So these are reminders that we have a good tradition that we've received, and we take advantage of it by practicing in line with that tradition, and that way we pass it on complete, not just in words, but also through our actions. We're doing a candle circumambulation tonight. The candles represent discernment. The flowers represent concentration. And then the incense that we're going to be carrying represents virtue. So we're representative of the Triple Gem. But that's called Amisa Bucha. It's just symbols, showing homage through symbols. And then we practice. And that, the Buddha said, was the highest form of homage to the Buddha. Because you can imagine all those many aeons that he developed the virtues and developed the perfections and needed to become a Buddha. And it wasn't just for candles, flowers, and incense. Although you think about the amount of candles and flowers and incense that have been devoted to him over the centuries, that would be a huge pile. But even a big pile like that, that's not what he was aiming for. He was aiming for a knowledge, a skill that he could pass on to others so that anyone who wanted to put an end to suffering would know how to do it. We live in a world now where that is available. As the Buddha said, when it's not available, people are bewildered. They have no idea why they're suffering, what they could do to put an end to suffering, and do all kinds of things that should make the suffering worse. It's like certain forms of medicine that haven't been tested. You read about the treatments they gave back in the previous centuries, and sometimes the treatment was what killed the patient. In the same way, when the Buddhist teaching is unavailable, people's ways of trying to overcome suffering actually create more suffering for them. But now we know the way. It's simply up to us to show homage through the practice and show our respect for ourselves as well, for our desire to put it into suffering. And so think about that as you go through the day. It was this time of year that the Buddha gave his first sermon. And think about what it means for you right here, right now.